Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. As always, I do appreciate you stopping by, giving me your time. Now, on the bench today, we've got this lovely little Elaine date. Now, I've worked on a couple of Elaine watches before. Usually have the Falsa movement. I think the Falsa 4000. Whereas this one is slightly different because of the date. Now I can't get it on the time graph to start with because it's not running. And we'll see why that is shortly. I will say, strap yourselves in. It's a bit of a, a longer one this. There are quite a few problems. But first, what I'm going to do, get it out of the case. But take off the auto wind rotor. And to do that, that's just that little clip that you saw me just push back there it comes out nice and easy now when I shake it it does nothing I think it needs a good clean So out comes the stem. Seems okay. Now you saw me take that retaining ring out before. There should have been two screws holding that in. But they're missing, so I'll have to try and find some alternatives. As we can see, the case has seen better days. We will have a little look at that. I'm going to try something I haven't tried before. So we'll see how that turns out. That's to try and polish it by hand without the use of a little rotary tool. But the crystal doesn't seem too bad. Needs a bit of a clean. So we can get the hands off in order to get the dial off. Now again, after my last video, I'm not going to do a lot with the hands on this. I will re-loom them. And again, as always, I won't do a lot with the dial. Give it a clean up with some Rodico. That's as far as I'll go. We can put the hands into the little tub safe. But you can see, you don't want to go. There is a hair or something that's just holding it. That could be one of the reasons why nothing was moving when I shook it. So we'll undo these little lug screws. These hold the dial on. Just loosen them off. And then we'll be able to get the dial away. Pop that in with the hands. Next we can take off the dial washer. All that does is just keep the dial off the actual works. We can remove the hour wheel. And while I'm on this side, I'm gonna take off the cannon pinion. Now we can get it into a, a movement holder. There we go, things are moving now. Um, but it stops. So, first things first, we'll take off the balance and put that somewhere safe.
Just lifting it over the forks of the pallet there. And we can put it onto this stake. And then that will get moved out of the way until we're ready for it to be cleaned. Now, can you see that? As soon as I move that pallet fork over the other side, the escape wheel starts going. And the reason for that, that jewel. You can see the escape wheel is just going over the top of it. That's one of the issues with this watch. So what we'll need to do with that is flatten that jewel out and re -shellac it. Something I've only ever done probably once before, I think. But in the meantime, we'll continue with the disassembly. Taking off the automatic works. Now, some of the felters I've worked on, the automatic works is a separate unit. So when you undo some screws, the whole of the complication comes away. Whereas on this one, it's all part of the trainer wheels bridge. So first thing out is that little spring. We don't want that going into space. We've got this little wheel with two extra wheels on and making a bit of a, a mess trying to get them out. We'll move that wheel out of the way and the other wheel. And now we can get hold of this. Let's see automatic works. I'm just going to take this cap jewel off. You can see there's still some power in it there. It's unwinding. I'll let that do it on its own gently. Again, see how small some of these parts are. We're going to start taking off the trainer wheels bridge. As you can see that power is still still going. So what it will will do to ensure there's uh, no power, take out the pallet fork. Honestly thought all of the power would have disappeared by now. Seems to have stopped. <laughs> no. Pallets are trying to escape. And can you see that one there just at the top? That's not level. Sorry for the focus, it's not a, an autofocus camera, that one. But what we will have to do is flatten it down and re shellac it. So now we can take the trainer wheels bridge off. And then start with the trainer wheels. Now, the Elaine brand, it does have an interesting history. It was uh, registered by a watchmaker, Achille Barry of Perintroy, Switzerland, on March the 22nd in 1941. But by the 1950s, Elaine had gained a reputation for producing high-class watches. 
and they usually used Swiss precision watch co cases and Felser movements. But in 1944, he partnered with Alfred Barry and they opened under the name Eschil Barry & Co. The company later became Eschil Barry Montrez Elaine and continued to advertise the Elaine brand. But eventually the company transformed into Elaine Watch SA in December of 1960. I mean, the watches do feature the distinctive block capital font for the Elaine signature. I mean, the brand also produced under the names Dania and Rubina. Now this particular movement, I have a little bit of a soft spot for because it was probably the first movement I su successfully serviced. So I am quite familiar, but I've never done the date version. I do believe it has a, a date correction function by turning it back to 10 p.m. and then past midnight. So you haven't got to keep going around and around and around. It does have ink block shock protection. I'll we'll say some of the plates are pressed down pretty stiff. So you'd have to be a bit careful you don't bend anything. As you can see there, I'm right next to the posts trying to lift it away. So that's that side empty. And we can move on to the date side. So this is fairly new to me. We've got these two retaining clips. These make sure that that date ring doesn't go anywhere except for round in a circle. Now again, there's this issues on this side. We will need to replace a, a couple of wheels. Oh, did you see that spring out? Now that is for making the date spring over. So when you go from the 10th to the 11th, for example, you'll just click over quickly. We can take out the keyless works. The yoke spring. We can remove the yoke. And you can see on the bench there, the setting lever. And this little intermediate wheel is a bit of a pain to get out. And the, the last thing is the date setting wheel. As you can see that little notch there is what actually turns the date wheel and we can remove the mainspring from out the barrel now 
the barrel arbor is actually attached to the barrel lid. Just detach it. As you can see, it's an automatic watch, but that's not an automatic spring. And the reason for that is because inside the barrel, there is a bridle. So that part actually slips along inside the barrel, which I will kind of demonstrate for you. So can you see the end of that mainspring? There's a little tab on that bridle and it will catch that tab and just pull along the inside of the barrel. Before it goes in the cleaner, we'll get some pegwood in the jewel holes. And what this does is it gets rid of any dried grease. And the same on the trainer wheels bridge. This is the post for the rotor, for the auto winding. And we've got another jewel hidden underneath. And that's the same with this little bridge just under that metal cap is another jewel give it a clean you can see with my mat there's quite a dirt that's come off this As usual, I'll clean all of the pivots with a bit of ever stick or eve stick, however you want to say it. And then we can get everything into the basket ready for cleaning. Now all I try to do is keep everything, say everything parts together, so the automatic works, you know, wheels barrels, things like that. Try and keep them together, keep the screws together. That way it doesn't get as confusing. And some parts I do actually put into these little brass baskets. And then Cap jewels, I'll pop into this little jar, which I've got a bit of version B dip in. It keeps them safe and it cleans them. Then we can get the rest of the parts into the cleaning machine. While they're in there, we'll have a look at the pallet forks. Now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna clean off the shellac. And what I'm doing that with is some isopropyl alcohol that will dissolve the shellac that's already on there. And 
and I will scrape. I know that jewel is fine, but I'm still gonna remove the shellac and put some more new on. Come in with a bit more isopropyl alcohol and a fiber from the brush. <laughs> So what I will do is I will actually put it into a pot of isopropyl alcohol, leave it in there for 10 minutes, and that will dissolve the rest of the shellac. And then to apply some new shellac, what we need to do is to warm a, a bit up to almost get like a, a hair off of it. Sorry about filming, but just like that. And you get a strand. And there is a, an actual tool for holding the pallet forks, but I don't have one, so I've constructed this contraption. And the pallet jewels are actually flat. As I, I'll show you now. It's just because I've got it on its side and it's still a little bit loose. But all this metal thing does is to hold the pallet fork while you warm it. Just like so. So that's over a flame of alcohol because it burns clean and quite hot so we'll warm that up and then when it's warm we'll come in with a bit of shellac and just touch it to the end there of the stones and as you can see it's starting to melt that's one side done over to the other gone over the side a little bit there that's not too much of an issue we'll be able to clean that up and I'm just taking it off put on this with a little bit of brass to show you that's what it looks like at the end and then we can move on to getting the rest of the watch together first we're going to put the spring back in the barrel and that orange grease is some breaking grease all I'm going to do is put that on the wall of the barrel And you don't need too much, but I always overdo it in the barrel, I don't know why. Put up here a few blobs. And that's probably enough, but another little bit for good luck. And then we can get the bridle in. Now this is the bit that will slip against that wall and that grease. I'm just going to track it around the barrel a bit. Dis distribute that grease. And that's that little notch that the spring will grip onto. Is that just... This saddle just enables you to use a normal mainspring. It doesn't have to be a particular, the automatic particular type. Now we can clean up the excess. Add in some oil. Now I do, again, I've probably gone over the top with the oil. I say probably, definitely. And I did have a comment on the last video but the way I see it, as long as it's not dripping, I can't see it doing too much harm in the, the main barrel. Now, if it was on a pivot, it could cause havoc with the movement. But again, I think we should be good. As you can see, I'm just walking it back into the barrel. Now, I did try my set of cheap Chinese mainspring winders but nothing fitted now sometimes what I do is I put grease on my fingers and take off the cots because you can get bits of the the rubber stuck in between the, the mainspring sometimes but we got away with it on this occasion and with the spring in the barrel we can add a, a touch more oil not that it needs it, 
and we can get the barrel lid on. Now remember the barrel arbor is attached to this lid. So you kind of sort of twist it as you, you push it. And that will snap down. And with that done, we can put the reversing wheel on the underside of the train wheel bridge. And that starts with this small collet and then the wheel. And then a touch of oil and we can screw it down. Again, if it had been on the other side, that would have been a reverse threaded screw. We can pop the centre wheel in. So there's that bridge that will sit over the top of that. See, this is the little tray that keep all the parts in, stops any dust getting onto it. And with that seated, we can come in with the screws and get it tightened down. As you can see, the movement number is just there. The FELSA 4007. So again, if you're getting into this hobby and you're wondering how to tell what it is it's usually on the the main plate it's the falser is the manufacturer and the 4007 is the movement number come back in with this little plate These screws are pretty small. Can be a bit fiddly sometimes. oil in there that's where the mainspring barrel goes so that will help the arbor run freely that's the set and lever screw Quite often I do forget to put that in. That just means you end up having to disassemble the movement again to get it in. But now we can start with the trainer wheels and the escape wheel. Then we can come in with the, the fourth wheel or the seconds wheel. That's where it can get confusing. What I mean by the seconds wheel, it's in, in charge of the seconds. And we can put the seconds pinion in. Now, as I'm voicing this, I've realized I actually used too thick a oil. That's a, a pretty fast moving part, so I should have used 9010, but We'll see what it uh, effect it has at the end on the time grapher. And the intermediary wheel, or the third wheel.
Now we can line the trainer wheels bridge up before dropping it down. And again, on some watches, this process can take hours. And if things don't line up, you can get quite frustrated. But again, I've said it before, inevitably, it's the escape wheel that will cause you issues. And again, if you've got any cover plates or anything on the bottom that you've removed, before you start doing the trainer wheels, put them back in because you will never get them to line up otherwise. Now rocking the mainspring barrel will sometimes help drop the pivots into the jewel holes. You see that's just dropped down there and now it's all free moving. Again, I'll keep a bit of pegwood on the top. When I put the screws in, and that will stop anything jumping out. So once you've got one or two screws in, you can move the pegwood. It's not needed then. And that's just keeping a bit of pressure down to stop anything moving. Just try everything again. It's still free moving. We can continue doing up the bridge. Drop the mainspring bridge in. See a hair there? I'll do remove it. This is the click spring. It's not your usual click spring. And the first time I did one of these, it was difficult. But there is like a little recess. So as long as you pop that spring into that recess, you should be good. Like I said, it can be a bit tricky. engaged we can get the screw in the burger hot dogs um whatever don't mind what you're saying sorry mm. again make sure everything's free moving and next up we can install the pallets you can see if uh, our fix has worked. Put the pallet cock on. Remembering anything with one screw is a cock. If it's got more than one screw, It'll be a bridge. Get that screwed down. And then we can put a bit of power into the mainspring. There we 
we go. Seems to have worked. So what you're looking for is that sharp flick backwards and forwards. So with them in, we can now look to do the cap jewels. They've been in the version B dip cleaning. So we want to add a, a tiny drop of oil in the center. Just like that. And then we'll put the chaton back on the top. And the capillary reaction will just keep them two together. And do this spring. Just lift it back. We can drop the jewel in and then close this spring back in. As you can see, there's just two little tabs and they, they slide under the front there. Just like that. You can turn it back over. And see if it has any life. This is always my favorite part. Especially since it didn't work before. There we go. Now it hasn't got a full wind, there's only a tiny bit of power in. But we'll get it screwed down and then we can put that capsule back in on the top. So we'll get the top capsule in. It's the same as the bottom. Let's come out the version B dip. And then we'll put a tiny drop just in the middle. See a little fibre there. I was just getting rid of that. you see that fiber of some such there we go and the chaton can go on the top and then the same process Take the springs out, move the clip just out of the way. Pop the jewel in. And close that spring back up. And with that cap jewel in, it already is beating better. So what I'm going to do is come along and oil these jewels. Now again, this is a critical part because if you do use too much oil it can slow the movement down 
So you're trying to add just the smallest amount, but the same amount on both sides of that pivot. Because if you've got more on one side than the other, it can, like I say, it can slow it down. We've got this other little catch all to do. So it is roughly in the middle, about two thirds of that stone. So it's good enough for me. What we can do is drop it into the movement. Screw it down. And then for the minute, that's that side done. We can move on to the dial side. You see just the smallest drop in that little well. Now we're just going to oil the pallet forks. This is probably the bit I struggle with most, I think, at the minute, with oiling. I'll put a drop on the end of that. And then work it through. And then we'll add another little drop and then work that through as well. And as you can see, I have removed the balance to oil these. You can do it from the other side but I, I do feel more comfortable doing it from this side. So we are, as she balances back in. So once that's all done up, we can turn it over. We can then start on the dial side. We'll start with the setting lever. Now this is a, can be a little bit awkward. I know some people will hold it in place with a bit of Rodico. Me personally, I like to put my finger on it. And once you've given the screw a couple of turns and the threads started, you can put it back in the movement holder and carry on. And then next we're going to add a little bit of oil to the centre wheel where the cannon pinion will go on and then we can install that. I just want a, a firm press. So now we can install the clutch but before we do that we'll add some grease. And 
and then we've got the winding pinion again put a bit of grease on that and then the stem Work that grease round a little bit. We're going to put some oil on these posts. Just wiping up my excess. Then we can get the yolk in. Yes, I'm not yoking. bit of grease at the bottom of the yolk that's where the spring will rub against and that's this spring here oops try again They do, they frighten me, these springs. You can see my hesitation before. I didn't even want to look at it because I knew it would fly away. So what I'm just trying to do is hold it in place with one set of tweezers and just come in with another set. And get it into place now if you can guess the error I've made there please leave a comment but I do rectify it I don't actually film it because you'll you see me putting the rest of it together you don't want to see me take it apart to put it together again but I'm just going to add some oil onto these posts for the intermediate wheel and yeah minute wheel so we can come in with that crown wheel and then drop in the minute wheel And then next in, we can put the setting lever spring. That'll ensure that yoke spring won't go anywhere. And getting things lined up before I drop a screw in there once that's done up I can come along and, and grease it so with my fingers just in the way there but call it a, a lobster claw just sort of grease both the cups and then pull it in and out work it around a bit and then come in with a bit of rodco afterwards and clear up bit of oil on 
where this is where the date jumper wheel goes. So you've got that little tab that's been pressed out the actual wheel and that's raised. So as that turns, that will catch the date ring and move it along. Before we add the screw in and a bit of oil. Work that oil around. And then we have this other little wheel, and this is attached to this retaining plate. This is what helps to keep the date ring on. So before we put that in, we'll put a bit of oil on those forks, and then we'll Line it up, drop it in. And then drop the date ring on. And then we can put that retaining plate with that cog on into place. And get that screwed down and you can see why it's important to get the right screws in the right places you know if that had been any longer that would have come through the plate probably and it could have done some damage so again we can get this second retaining plate on and again you'll see the screws are very short screw And then the other side of that hole, as you can see, there's moving parts. So, you know, if you was to use the wrong screw and it was a bit too long, you know, the damage, you know, could be costly. A little bit of dirt inside that screw. Now from a screwdriver. Now this is the date jumper. So it will fit in that little hole and then goes in between these teeth. And there is a spring the other side. Now this, this is what sprang out of the movement when we were disassembling it. So if it comes out that easy, oh, where's that spring go? There we are. Putting it back in, I've got this feeling isn't going to be as easy as it was for it to come out. What makes me say that is if how easy it, it threw itself out the movement. I've got this feeling every time I try and put this spring into place, it just it's not going to sit there. Try and press it down over that post. Oh, see that flew off. So what I'm going to try is I've got everything lined up. I'm going to put this plate over. So this is the the plate. Uh, when I took off, it all sprang from underneath. So I'm thinking, if I get a screw in. Get it in place pretty much i'll then try and set that spring behind that date jumper arm 
just like this. And then I can tighten that plate up and it shouldn't go anywhere. So we'll put the hour wheel on and then we'll give things a test. Let's just fall out the movement almost. But now as that touches the teeth of the ring, that should change the date. But can you see that hour wheel is going underneath that cog that was on that retaining plate? Can you see those teeth? I will focus in a minute. There we are. They shouldn't be like that. They've been rounded. So if I could get a side on view, they would taper out thinner towards the tip of that cog. So we're going to need to replace that wheel. So out it comes. Like I say, luckily I have got a, a donor movement. It is a, a Falsa 4000, but these parts are the same. I'll drop that in. Can you see the difference between the, the tips of that? new cog and the tips of the old cog do you see how they're raised they've not been worn down at the end so flip it back over and we can make a start on the automatic works i'll we'll start with this post for the oscillating weight Get it into place and we can get the screws in. Again, whenever you're, you're working with the balancing, you do want to be careful. You don't want to slip and do any damage. Add a little bit of oil into that jewel hole. This is where one of the wheels for the automatic winding goes. So it's going to add a little bit of oil in to where that round plate goes with the two of the wheels on. So with a bit of oil on there, what we can then do is get it into place and add those wheels before we put the wheels on we'll oil it so I have no idea what the correct name for this this part is second big wheel in I'm just gonna oil the hole where this ratchet goes bit down onto the teeth and with that in position we can put the spring in Ok, 
again, it's like any of the springs, you just got to make sure it doesn't disappear. You can see I've got a hair on it there. Just zooming in, there you go. So I don't want that hair trapped there. So I am going to move it. So I think that's an actual eyelash. And then that's in position. And what we can now do is put the cover plate on. It's so like any of the plates, get it lined up first. And like I said, on other movements, Felsa movements I've worked on that have been automatic. This has been a, a separate module. I think two now I've come across like this. With that plate in, we can come along with the screws and tighten it down. And there's three screws holding this plate down. All pretty small. Again, we use a bit of pegwood, keep a bit of pressure on that plate, stop it moving. We can get all of the screws in. And get them tightened down. Now we can look to getting the dial on. So I'm just going to back off these dial feet screws. And what I do is I, I do them up tight when it goes into the cleaning machine. Otherwise they tend to come out. Back them off now and that should allow me then to get the dial on. But of course I've got to get the our wheel and the dial washer on first. Go over the dial with a bit of Rodico. Get any specks off that I can see that will move. The dial's not in too bad a shape. I could possibly have a go at polishing those indices up but I am hesitant to do so with dolls at the minute especially on a, a nice working watch like this what I might do is get some scrap movements and have a practice on some of those see what I can do and what you can't do I'm just doing up both dial feet screws now And then I'm just going to make sure the date will jump. There we go. So I'll put that to one side and take a look at the hands. Again, I'm don't have the best to draw the hands. If you remember my last video, I uh, almost killed the hands on that watch but all I'm going to do on this is remove the old loom and re-loom them I'm 
And I think these were reloomed at some point, but not very well. So I'm just going to see if I can polish them up just a tiny bit. Use a bit of poly watch, a bit of pegwood. And then we can reloom them. So that's the, the binding agent that goes in first, and that powder is the actual loom. That's what glows in the dark. So we'll mix it up. Now I know some people add coffee and tea and things like that just to darken it down, age it up a little bit. But I'm just gonna put fresh fresh loom in. I did see a great tip from Chronoglide, and that's to do it from the bottom. Which I've got to agree, I think gives a better finish. Now there is a little bit of a, a bleed over from the side. We'll see that when we turn the lights out. You see just on the sides of the hands there. But you don't notice that with the naked eye. So with those done we can move on to the case. And all I've got here are some lollipop sticks with some different grades of uh, sandpaper on. So we're going to start with a 280, we've got a 1200, 2500 and a 3000. I'm just going to go nice and slow. And start on the sides. I mean, I won't show you all of this, just give you an idea as to what I was doing. That's the first grit. And then as we move up, we get less and less scratches. And it becomes smoother and smoother. Now I've not done it this way before, I normally use my little Dremel, but sometimes you can round off the corners and this has got some fairly square corners, so I want to try and keep them. But I kept going, and we'll see what that looks like at the end. In the meantime, I need to get the hands on, and then we can get it into the case. Now I do need to get some wooden tweezers or plastic tweezers for picking up pans and dials. It's just a little hand press tool. helps to make sure it sits level and flat. Get the minute hand on, get that lined up, and then press that down as well. And once that is on, we put the winding stem back on. We'll spin the hands round. Just to make sure that they, they clear each other and don't foul. Which that seems okay. Then we can put the seconds hand on. Okay, 
have it taken away and press it down lightly. Now we can get it in the case, make sure there's no dust there. Let's give it a little blow with my blower. Flip that over. I've stopped, I think, just because the hands are resting against the glass. We'll get this ring in. The winding stem in and I've sourced a couple of screws for this ring so once they're done up that will keep it off the face so I keep the, the face of the dial off the front of that glass and then we can add a bit of oil onto the oscillating weight stem And this is just held in place with a little clip. So I'll get an oiler and just push that down and it will flick into place and that stops it coming off. And it runs freely. So we'll get the back on. Now all it needs is a nice strap and we'll see it out in the wild. I think before we do that, we'll get it on the time grapher. See what that says. So you can see it's not good. We'll uh, have a little play, see what we can get it down to. And there we go. Now, thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please join me on the next video where I'll be looking at a 100-year-old pocket watch. So thanks again, and I'll see you soon.